Hey, how's it going, all you lovers of Echi? It is Blackwing K, and as you can see, we're about to react to the final episode of Semron Kagura Shinobi Master. Now, before I continue with that, let me just say once again, Happy New Year's, welcome to 2019. This is not the first video of the new year, it is a video of a certain I can't talk. Semron Kagura Shinobi Reflections, the Asuka story arc conclusion was actually the first video of the new year, but I don't really state it here. So this is the official, this will be the official one. And it's to conclude Shinobi Masters, which I did do already in a live stream that got cut off by YouTube because YouTube doesn't like that. So yeah, once again, Happy New Year's and welcome to 2019. So what happened? You know, YouTube doesn't like when you live stream uh, copyright claimed content and it's just gonna cut it off for your viewers. So the live stream will still continue, and I could have done that to have the whole episode here in full, right? But uh, it cut it off for the viewers, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't really be fair for me to continue live streaming there, you know, and then no one's watching it, right? Because that defeats the purpose of that live stream that I wanted to do with you guys. So I went to another platform. I think it was Pegarto.tv, and we finished watching it there with a couple of people that came through. And, but then I realized that my channel is going to be left without the full reaction. Well, you know, like the reactions that I do. Reaction, then review, and whatnot. So, yeah, this is going to be that video. So, let me not keep you here, guys. Uh, and let's get straight to this reaction. Alright? Let's go! <laughs> my god, look at them. Busty beauties. You, Ice Queen Yumi? And Fubuki. God damn. Oh, Rasetsu, Rasetsu. So here we have Asuka, if you remember the last episode, she kind of overused the Fumakori. So now we have basically all the Shinobi girls versus Rasetsu, which is a bit unfair, but you know. Rasetsu is a beast, she can take him. Right, so we got a brief little flashback that Fubuki's mother saved Rasetsu's life. Oh god. I forgot, you know, in Deep Crimson, the Shinobi transformations are pretty awesome, how they put the scroll right there, and then, but So this title is Hometown. And I really didn't get the reference at first, but some people pointed it out that Takaki refers to the big uh, rears as hometowns. That's pretty good. But yeah, in Deep Crimson, uh, look at that, they're transforming into their uh, Shinobi Master outfits. That's pretty awesome. I like that. Ah, we're about to get to one of my favorite scenes of this episode. I'll let you know who it is. It's gonna happen so briefly. There we go! Hibari! Big butt go boom! She did that so splendidly and beautifully. It's messed up what they're doing to my baby girl Rasatsu, but damn. You can never go wrong with Hibari's big butt go boom. And here we go with the Fuma Kori again. So here Rasatsu loses it and becomes a complete beast Yoma. A beastly Yoma. So I'm wondering, do all Yoma have this ability? Just toss away your... I guess your feeling? And just become a monster? I, I guess they can do that. Damn, look at Rasatsu though. It reminds me of a Digimon, actually. The way she was standing like that. So, I didn't like that they threw this in. Now... How do you know how to do it? Oh, because she saw Asuka do it a number of times, remember? Episode, uh, what was it, 11? She did it a lot of the time, so... So now she's saying that, oh, I can do it too. There's nothing you can do that I can. Look at that, Crimson Homura and Ultimate Asuka. I just call her Ultimate Asuka until I get a confirmed the name. 
for her ultimate form. Right now it's Ultimate Asuka and Crimson Homura. Homura chan. Uma. Holding! I hate that I'm doing that too. I hate that technique. Damn, simply because what they're doing to Rasetsu and because it kills the Shinobis. So it's like a double edged weapon, man. Double edged sword. I'm telling you, though, this soundtrack is godly. So there, Yumi is taken out of Ice Queen mode and. She is down for the count. Oh, and look who decides to show up. Gekko and Senko. Like three episodes later. I was even questioning where the hell they were at like the whole time, remember? I'm like, yo, what happened to these girls? They never show up again. So they want to teach her the warmth that Kurokage taught them. But nope, Fubuki's not having that. Ah. Now that is a lie, and Fubuki straight up knows that. And now the guessing girls show up. Hero's making references to Yumi being a devil fruit user. It's like, what's Yumi? Did she eat the ice ice fruit or something? Because she died because she went in the water? She's a shinobi. I don't think she'll go down that easily. Oh, look at Minori so cute back there. I like Minori. I like Minori a lot. Oh, Fubuki cannot believe this, though. Shinobi transformation. Again, wait a second, how'd she do that again? I guess Shinobi Master Transformation? Because she was already in her transformed state. Abyssal Mode, Miyabi! Oh yes, here we go. So I guess Miyabi finally woke up from her path of hatred. When you fight for revenge, you cannot attain true strength. Said like a true master shinobi. Baby girl Miyabi. And now she uses Huma coding as well. Look at that. And I personally don't like this scene because... Uh, well, you'll see why. Like, it, it's so powerful... But at the same time, I don't like it. And that's it. Rasetsu is gone. Never to be seen again. That's messed up. I like Rasetsu. Like, I don't know if you could tell from the past reactions, but I loved Rasetsu. Damn, man. That's messed up. Well, it's finally time for the final battle between Yumi and Fubuki. I mean, did you really think Ice Water would take her down? Her powers are literally ice, so I mean, I don't think it works the same. So I like that the decision became unanimous That they will no longer really slay the Yoma But they'll work together to end the war between Shinobi and Yoma I like that uh, sort of conclusion they came up with Especially with Miyabi who was on that full path that like No, I only kill, 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 kill But now she's like yeah, I kind of just forgot to wake up from that dream that I had. The nightmare that I was in. Yeah. So yeah, Fubuki was taken down. She basically concedes. 
We still have Yoma seeping out of that gate. Oh, but here we have Kagura, of course. The Yoma Slayer. I guess she'll still slay the Yoma. She doesn't really care. It's her job, after all. Uh, of course. Despite all the girls choosing not to partake in this slaying of the Yoma, but Kagura will still do it. All right. I hate it. This part, too, is like... They, I thought there was something big that was going to go down at the Kikai Dome, but... They all basically... Oh, they said they sealed the Yoma. Oh, Sayuri was there, too? We never even got to see her. Wow. It was Sayuri, Hanzo, uh, Kiria, and Rin. They were all at the Kikai Dome, but we never really got anything from them over there. We just knew they were there since the beginning of the series. Well, Rin was kind of, like, not there, but... Then she did go there, but uh, it's whatever. Has anyone ever noticed that the sword and the shield thing? It, it, it always gave me the wrong image of the sword. It looks like the short the the sword is bent down, but it's actually just put in, and then the image of the shield makes it look like the sword is warped. Uh, that always threw me off visually. And so that's it. That was the end of the, all the fighting, and now we're in the concluding part of the episode where the whole episode just tones down. Oh, he body and Minori interacting there. Christmas. Wow, Yozakura. Yes, you do, baby girl. Here we have Heavy Joe doing some training. Yes, Mia be a splendid job waking up and realizing what she had to do. Okay, Emu. Let's tone this down a bit. A new type of kink? Riona will always be... Close to the heart, Riona. I always keep you close to the heart. So yeah, Miyabi's goal is to become the ultimate shinobi. And this was one great step towards that goal of hers. Oh, Hanabi. Really? Leftovers? You guys are working for leftovers? Damn, the struggle is real for these girls. I mean, of course, we knew that from the beginning, but damn, the struggle is real. And we come back full circle. We started off with Asuka and Yumi doing some shopping, and it looks like we're about to conclude it with them doing the shopping again. So they did say that the Fuma coating will eventually kill you if you continue to use it, but can you get better from that? Like, can it reset? Like, if you stop using it for like a year or two, can it reset? Oh, hey, look, it's Fubuki again. Back in those damn bandages. Come on, take those off. You're beautiful, Fubuki. You are gorgeous. I mean, you know, that is going against the shinobi law, but like I said, the shinobi law is stupid. We should learn to coexist with the Yoma. Yes, the sword and the shield. Perhaps the time will come when we will fight again. Right, so she gives back the sword and the shield to Yumi, or rather she just gives it to her after she had gotten it before because... Remember, it was given to her by Kurokage if she was going to slip into the madness, the hatred, the darkness taking over. But apparently she doesn't have that anymore. No hard feelings. What's even better is that Senko and Gekko get to be with her again. You know, it's like, these girls, man, they went through a lot. They went through a lot. Aww. Somewhere in another place. Ratsatsu and her mother are with her. And she finally accepts it. Yeah, so the sword was actually bent a little bit, but not bent all the way, like the shield looked like. The sword and the shield. 
A lot of significance behind this, really. I like that they carried this over from the anime as well. That's been like the kind of recurring theme of this series altogether. Including the games, too. And what kind of shinobi is that? Right, the shinobi light. The story of young shinobi girls who live in the shadows. So yeah, that pretty much concludes uh, the season of Shinobi Masters. Now, we have been hearing a little buzz around. I guess it's not much of a secret. Here. Not that it ever was a secret, but I didn't know about it until recently. But there will be more to come for Shinobi Masters. But as the first season of, uh, what was it? Skirting? It was a Skirting Shadows, but it was basically the first uh, Senran Kagura anime. That after it ended, they had a series of OVAs that came out. Uh, throughout the span of the year, I believe, or I, I forgot how frequent they came out. But yeah, they had that. Shinobi Masters will also have OVAs that will come out. So maybe we can expect that throughout the year. Um, Yeah, throughout the year of 2019 to come out. Who knows? It might come out very frequently, or it might come out like, you know, each month or whatnot. But just so you know, I will be reacting to that when they do come out. Uh, I'm not sure if Crunchyroll is going to have it. Crunchyroll usually doesn't do too well with the OVAs, I find. Like... You know, you usually go somewhere else to find that. Crunchyroll just has the set of episodes, but the OVAs they usually don't have. Like, I think it's like that for Two Love Rue. I have not seen any uh, OVAs for Two Love Rue's. Unless I missed it, but I haven't seen that. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. Uh, now we'll move on to the segment where we will now review what has happened. Just for this episode, really, and then maybe I'll throw in a couple of things. Um, how I felt throughout the whole season. Like, did I enjoy it, or was it meh, or was it, eh, pretty good, pretty good, or was it bad, All right? So yeah, let's go over there now. So yes, uh, Rasetsu ended up getting sealed by the Fuba coding technique. Uh, throughout this, as soon as I found out about Rasetsu, what was going on, and how it was going to end. I didn't want her to die or be sealed away. I wanted there to be at least a peaceful conclusion, something like, you know, like what happened at the end. Uh, Fubuki ends up just dipping it, like, you know, like, hey, whatever. Uh, it looks like maybe there will be a time when we fight again, but we can coexist. You know, we can, I can be here, you can be there, and whatnot. It, it kind of just ended on a note like that, but it could have been where Rasatsu just kind of dips it as well. Like, hey, she didn't have to get sealed. Why does she have to get sealed? I, I don't understand. Why Rasatsu? Sure, all the other Yoma might have, you know, been able to get sealed, but she was special. She was like... I don't know, man. She had more of a personality than the other Yoma that appear. Granted, probably the other Yoma did have their own personality as well. I'm not trying to discriminate against the Yoma here. Please don't, uh, please don't call the, uh, the protection of Yoma disciplinary committee or wh whatever I'm trying to come up with there. But look, uh, the other Yoma were probably just already in beast mode like Rasetsu ended up doing. She gave up everything and turned into a beast. So maybe all the other Yoma that have been appearing have already gone through that, but they were kind of lesser Yoma. Uh, if Rasatsu could have been considered a Yoma general, uh, I don't know too much about them. I, like I said, I have not beaten Senra Kagura 2, Deep Crimson, so I don't know too much about the Yoma generals. But I think Yoma could have been like a... Uh, Rasatsu could have been a Yoma general. So yeah, she was pretty strong and had her own personality above all and whatnot. Man, it took... It took Asuka, Homura, and Miyabi using Fuma Korin to actually finally seal her. Oh, and big props to my girl, Miyabi, who, you know, like I kept saying throughout, she woke up because she was still on the straight path of, like, killing all Yoma and whatnot. And then she brought back that, hey, I guess I didn't listen to what my mother said because, uh, you know, she had to overcome. She cannot have gone through the path of hate 
and continue to just kill the she was on the path of revenge and she could not fight for revenge because she does that she cannot become the ultimate shinobi and that right there that's why mia b that's why mia b is one of my favorites that's why mia b is one of my favorites i think she will be uh the next kagura like I, I was thinking, I was leaning more towards Asuka just because of a lot that we learned through her. But Mia B is a powerful contender for the next Kagura. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But yeah, in terms of how I felt about Rasetsu getting sealed, I didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. There, there had to have been another way not to seal Rasetsu. But in the end, that happened, and I just wish that those who got sealed there will be a way to, for them to come back. That's that's the only thing I can hope for now. Now that it's happened to somebody I really liked, I hope that maybe down the line, there's a way that you can actually at least see them. Like, sure, they don't have to come back here, but maybe there's a way we can go to them when we come back. But, you know, there'll be like a rule that they can't cross over, but we have an ability where we can cross over there and then we can freely come back. If something like that happens, that'll be good, right? Who knows where they were sent to? It's like a different dimension, that they're sealed away in, that they can never come back into this place. So, yeah. Hopefully that there will be one day that you can cross over there without being trapped in there, too. That would suck. But, yeah. Man, that scene. <sighs> Rasetsu, thank you. Thank you for being a part of our lives. I definitely appreciated our small time together. It was such a short time, but I feel like I learned so much from you, and uh, maybe one day we will see you again, Rasetsu. My dear Rasetsu, you were such a fine, thick, gorgeous Yoma. With a whole lot of personality to boot. They did you wrong. They did you wrong. But at least you did fight for Fubuki. You did what you had to do. And you know what we call that? We call that the sacrifice of a protagonist, you know. Many protagonists have done this throughout their anime careers. Uh, the sacrifice of Jiraiya that led to his death. Now, that was the main one I was thinking about, but there's been other anime characters, figure anime characters that have sacrificed themselves for, you know, the greater good. So she fought for Fubuki, she did what she had to do. And yeah, they threw in there slightly, let me add it as well. How, why is she doing this all for Fubuki? Well, Fubuki's mother saved her. So when Fubuki's mother and her father basically died there, she took, uh, she took Fubuki in because it's like, oh, I can't let her child die, man. Because it would be how, how, I will regret this for the rest of my life, knowing that the person who saved me, I let their child die. So it's kind of like a sense of responsibility like that. So she took the, she took the helm and decided to take in her daughter and raise her as her own. But then she was too injured. She dropped it off to the roaming shinobi. I did say that he was randomly there. But again, it would make sense that he was randomly there. Since he is a rogue shinobi, he was just he was just doing some rogue shinobi stuff. That's why he randomly strolled there. So Rasetsu met Kurokage. And that's how Kurokage took in Yumi. Uh, Fubuki, I mean. Not Yumi. Took in Fubuki. And that's how Fubuki ended up meeting Yumi in their childhood. So throughout that time, I was trying to figure out what exactly was the relationship with Rasetsu and Fubuki's mother. I was thinking that uh, at first, since, you know, Fubuki's mother is a Yoma, we saw her, a beauty, I thought that maybe Rasetsu was her sister. But no, it wasn't. Then I, um, I think I went towards more like Rasetsu was like a guardian, which actually makes more sense now, like, you know, you saved me, so I will now stick with you and I'll protect you from danger and whatnot. So we could consider Rasetsu sort of like a guardian. Uh, like one of our fellow Senran Kagura lovers said, it could be like a relationship with Kagura and Naraku. Naraku is like the guardian of Kagura, so we can sort of put those two together. The Yoma and her Yoma guardian... The Yoma Slayer and her Yoma Slayer Guardian. So, yeah. We can sort of put those two together. So, yeah, I really wanted to throw that in there while I still had the chance. As I did slightly talk about it during the live stream and other places. But I didn't really get to go too in-depth about that. So, yeah. There you have it. Something else I was kind of disappointed in. Like, 
I, I understand the structure of this anime. Look, I... I'm used to seeing a lot of anime that's adapted from games. And, you know, they have another source material to it, right? We could say Danganronpa. Persona 5, the animation. Uh, those are animes that came from games. This one is a little different because the game that it told part of the story from was New Link. That is a mobile game. So, it's a mobile game that's not even available in the U.S. yet. Or if it ever will be. And... New Link was a fun game. I didn't understand a lick of the story. I just enjoyed the style of the gameplay of it. You know, leveling up the girls, transforming the girls and whatnot. It was a fun game. So, I can assume that this came from the... With a slight variation that this came from that mobile game. Because I feel like a lot of this wasn't in that game. Like, they were telling a story and we knew that it was basically... The shinobis once again fighting each other. Like, for example, uh, Hanzo versus Heavy Joe. I think in the conclusion, it was either Hanzo versus Heavy Joe or Hanzo versus uh, Yesen. I, I don't remember the storyline of the game, but I think they're adding more story to it anyway. Like, as months go by, they're adding more story to that mobile game. But when I last played it, that's where it ended off. Like, it was one final battle between... Hanzo in one of the schools, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm going to stick by. That's all I remember. So, I understand what kind of anime this was and how it was structured. Because, you know, it, it was basically like they threw in a lot of stuff. So, for you to actually catch on to this anime, understand what's going on, you'll have to have played basically all the other games. Even if some of the games don't tie in with this one. To understand the characters, to understand why certain characters, you know, react a certain way to one another. The relationship between Ryobi and Riona. Did you know that they are sisters? I don't think they ever bring that up in this anime, but those two girls are sisters, and Riona's a pervert, and Ryobi is like a, a, a sadist, a sadist, a sadistic woman, and she just loves... Those two go hand in hand, like Ryobi and Riona... Uh, Murasaki and Emu are also sisters. You learn that in Shinobi Versus. Uh, so there's a lot of things, you know, like, to understand this anime in whole, to accept it as a whole, you kind of have to be already a fan of this franchise. It'll be really hard for you to jump into this anime not knowing a single thing about Senran Kagura and just seeing how all these characters, a mashup of characters, going through a mashup of events and how they are actually, you know, dealing with it, interacting with each other. So... Uh, that's how this anime is kind of uh, structured. It's kind of like four fans of the series already that understand Senran Kagura and how it works. Then you can watch this anime. But if you were a first-timer watching this anime, you might have been confused. It was telling a story, and you might have kept up with that. But everything else happening in the background and whatnot... I mean, you know. I understand if you couldn't keep up with it. At least one thing you could probably keep up with is Mirai getting offended with the word flat chest because she is a flat chested character. For her age, compared to the other girls around her, yeah, she's a flat chested character. So, back to the relation to this scene in particular. I was disappointed. Like I said, I understand the structure of the anime. That's why I went on a whole tangent about talking about the structure of this anime in general. But, this scene says that, you know... Suzune just called them. Like, after they're finally done, uh, at this point, Fubuki is still not yet defeated, but Rasetsu has already been defeated. So, at the Kikai Dome, there was a big Yoma that was going to come out or something. Uh, basically, who was over there was Daidoji, Kiriya, Hanzo, Rin apparently also showed up over there after some time, and we also had Sayuri. We never saw Sayuri, but she was over there too. So, they just finished. So what I'm disappointed in is I thought we were going to have, like, a story involving that place. Like, maybe I thought that's where the final battle was going to be at. Because that place was hinted at towards the very beginning. So they keep hinting at this place, the Kikai Dome, a large Yoma, this and that. I'm thinking there's a huge battle that's going to take place over there. And I would have been satisfied with that. But we never got anything. Those guys never got any screen time. They were on that island throughout the entirety of the season. And I'm like, really? Oh, oh! now they're just randomly done. You might as well have just kept them over there and then, you know, forget about them. But no, they just had to throw in like, oh, by the way, 
Remember those Shinobi that were over there? Uh, they're done, by the way. So yeah, they're wrapping up things. They're going. They're gonna go home. Hanzo's gonna open up his uh, shop again. His it's a sushi shop, right? Yeah, I think it's a sushi shop. He's gonna open that again. Kitty is gonna return to his teacher duties. Uh, Sayuri, I I forgot what she does. Huh. But yeah, I was pretty dissatisfied with that. I didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. Uh, Rasetsu sealed. Uh, Kikai Dome never really, not a lot of focus on it, despite the show hinting a lot towards that location. Didn't like that one bit. The good parts of this episode was really the fights between the Shinobi girls, Rasetsu, and then Yumi versus Fubuki, their concluding fight. So we're actually going to head over to those scenes now. All right, so I made a little mistake, but we can quickly correct that. Fubuki had already been defeated by Yumi. Right before the scene where Haruka is explaining that Suzune is done at the Kikai Dome with the other uh, shinobi that were over there. So, yes, this is the finishing blow that knocks out... Well, it doesn't knock out Fubuki, but it leaves Fubuki down on the ground for the count. So, yeah, their fight... Their fight was satisfactory. Because, again, it was... It was not more of a fight with uh, power scaling involved, like, oh, I'm stronger than you, I'm going to bring down some meteors on you. Well, it was like, oh, I can't die that easily, uh, you can't kill me with ice water, because ice water is my main power. You know, you could go many ways, many directions with this fight, but this fight was more of an emotional battle. You know, you're trying to wake this person up so that she can finally accept it, like, hey, look. We don't have to fight. We're done killing the Yoma. All the girls have unanimously decided that they're not going to slay Yoma anymore. Because that's basically what the, the leaders of the girls decided. Yumi has decided that. Asuka has decided that. And because Asuka has decided that, Homura says, like, you know what? We can do that too. Like, we really don't have any beef with the Yoma. And we're rogue. They're rogue shinobi anyway. You know, they're doing the old thing. They're the Crimson Squad. So, hell. They'll go with that too. Miyabi was the only one that was standing on the, uh, she'll still obey the Shinobi law. She'll still slay the Yoma. But no, you know, she, she went with the, uh, Miyabi woke up as well. And she decided that, uh, she's going to become the ultimate Shinobi. So she cannot fight for revenge. Simply for revenge. As that does not steer her on the right path that she is on. So... Fubuki is defeated, and Senko and Gekko return to the scene after three episodes of being in hiding. I, who knows where they were hiding, don't ask me. I'm not the expert. I can't see Shinobi in the shadow, because, uh, you know, I'm a regular human. Come on, guys. Give me a break here. I'm a regular human. I cannot see these girls in the shadows. So, they teach her about, you know, what they learned from Kurokage. After, you know, it's, it's funny because those girls also, they came full circle as well, because... They were on one point, and then they went back, and they're they're following the new teachings of Kurokage now, which was basically the warmth that they learned from him. And Fubuki does not want to hear that at all. She's like, warmth will never reach me. I have Yoma blood in me. And, you know, Fubuki basically let that hatred take over. Because I could tell that she was still on the fence line before, as with her interactions with Yumi with a show, and when she told her story... But I think it was after she told her story is that she felt that she had to go on this path head on. No more hesitation. So which is why she was going on with the whole, oh, there's Yoma blood in me. I can't feel that warmth anymore. It'll never reach me. And I'm like, lies. You yourself don't believe that, Fubuki. Not even, like, you don't. You don't. Stop playing yourself. So there is Fubuki's defeat for you. That's what happens. And that's it. She returns the sword and the shield a clip back to her because again that was a gift from Kurokage to Fubuki. Uh, she'd actually dropped it, and Yumi picked it up. That is what happened. So that whole interaction happened. She gives it back to her. They skedaddle, and that's it. That ends that whole fight, and we transition over to the ending part of this episode, the conclusion. So yeah, I did mention earlier in the episode that Riona will always be uh, in a special spot in my heart. I don't know, man. I is it because she's a pervert? That's that's a very big factor to take in, to consider when you say that I like Riona. That is one big factor of why I like her. But man, dude, she, like I was explaining earlier, like if you're not a fan of the series, you don't know who this girl is and why Ryobi acts that way towards her. You know, 
it's like I said, this anime was mainly created for the fans, like who know the series, who understand the series, who've been keeping up with it from the beginning, basically. Like, you know, Samurai Kagura burst, Two Deep Crimson, then the split happens in the timeline or whatever, and then we have Shinobi versus, Estabu versus, Bon Appetit, Peach Beach Splash, and then there's Seven coming out, there's Reflections, uh, what are the Samurai Kagura I'm missing? New Link, the mobile game, there's New Wave, the browser game. You know, there's a lot to keep up with in the Samurai Kagura franchise, and if you... Like I said, you would have probably been way confused if you just jump into this without... Even though it doesn't bring up anything from the past series, like I noticed, like... It doesn't bring any of that up. But the history is there, and you can't just ignore that. Like... You could tell that Asuka... You can't really tell it because it, it wasn't portrayed as much, but Asuka and Homura have a deep rivalry going on. And it was shown in this last episode. It's like, oh, Asuka, there's nothing you can't do that I can't. Like, there's nothing you can do that I can't do. That shows right there, like, how big their rivalry is. And if you've played Deep Crimson, you know, uh, you could tell that uh, she has this goal to defeat Asuka before she's able to return to Heavy Joe. I'm assuming that didn't happen in this timeline because she's still part of the Crimson Squad. Or maybe something happens where she just decides to stay with the girls and whatnot. But yeah, I'll figure out soon enough what, what'll happen in the ending of that game. But yeah, I love Riona. I love Riona a lot. And I appreciate this fan service scene with her. I appreciate all fan service scenes with Riona. You can sign me the hell up. And yep, like you see, this is the ending scene of the season finale, basically. Or, you know, just the ending, the final episode scene. The last scene of the final episode. I keep changing up the world, uh, the words in my head. But yeah, right after what happens before this scene is basically that Fubuki shows up in her bandages. I wish she would take those things off. And she basically gives back the clip, the sword and the shield, to Yumi. She's like, well, I don't need this anymore. And she just gives her that look. And Yumi smiles at her like, my girl Fubuki, that's my sister. That's my older Onesan. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Or Onechan. Would you say Onechan? Yeah, that's my Onechan. So Yumi gives her that uh, look of approval. Because, you know, she says that she doesn't need it anymore. And, you know, they just, they saw it. They saw it in each other. And I'm like, yeah, I guess you don't anymore. And then Senko and Gekko. I, I feel happy for them. Because, you know, uh, the, a, a majority of their life was basically following under Fubuki. Who they thought was following under the old ways of Kurokage. But, again, there was a bond between them. And it hurt to see that... Fubuki just abandoned them. But of course, it's because Fubuki was on her, you know, warpath of destruction, revenge, F the shinobi, <laughs> Yoma for life. So yeah, uh, now that everything is finally done and calmed down and she's finally on a new path, who knows where Fubuki's gonna head to, Senko and Gekko can finally go back to them. And yeah, she accepted them. You know, they told her, you're not alone. We're gonna be with you too. And Fubuki was like, yeah, I guess you're right about that. I guess you girls will be with me. Let's go. Let's get out of town. And that's how they exit. So yeah, we go back full circle. They uh, Yumi gives the sword to Asuka as she keeps the shield for herself. Again, the symbolism with the sword and the shield. Yang and Yang. Uh, you know, they live in the shadows. There is light, but there is shadow as well. I can go on and on about the symbolism behind that meaning of the sword and the shield. So, yeah, that's basically our conclusion right there. <sighs> the girls, this is a story of shinobi girls who live in shadows. And I applauded that right there because it is so true. It is so true. And, again, if you're not really into Senran Kagura, I cannot stress this enough. If you're not really into Senran Kagura and you jumped into this... And you were confused, I'm sorry for that. I don't know why I'm apologizing, but you know. It, it's that, you know, you've had to have a level of understanding of the series before jumping into it. Is what I'm kind of trying to say. Like, again, I was making comparisons to the Danganronpa series that has an anime. I'm talking specifically about the first season of the anime, which was adapted from the first game. That one was too rushed, you know. After playing the games and then watching that anime, it's... It's a whole different ballgame. And, and granted, I saw the anime before I played the game. And I thought the anime was pretty damn good. That's why I got interested into the game. 
But after you play the game and then go back to the anime, you're like, what the hunk? <laughs> oh, man. The same thing for Persona 5, the animation. If I really, look, having played Persona 5 to its entirety, my first ever and only platinum trophy on the PlayStation 4, uh, having played that and then seeing the anime, I would not like to see someone watch the anime first then play the game. But somewhere deep in my mind, I did want to get the opinion of somebody who saw only the anime. Because for me, I did that with Persona 4, the animation. Then Persona 4 Golden was after, but Persona 4, the animation, was basically how I got into the Persona series. Because I was watching that anime to a certain point. And then I kind of like stopped for a bit. You know, the, the anime was looking good. You know, I like Persona. I'm like, oh, this is... This is interesting. What is Persona? So after a while that I got in the Vita and then, you know, I got Persona 4 Golden on the Vita and that's how I kind of woke up into the Persona franchise. So my first Persona game was Persona 4 Golden, but that's for another story. So yeah, that's the conclusion of this anime. I really hope you guys enjoyed my episode reaction. I know the live stream is still going to be on this channel and uh, you can basically go from that live stream and then watch this as it's kind of going to be the same thing. My review segment, uh, though, let's wrap it up. A rating out of 10. Mm -mm. A rating out of 10. This is going to be a tough one. Because I do, I don't want to be too biased towards the series. Like, I love Senran Kagura, so I could really easily give this a high score simply because of the name Senran Kagura. Totally, you know throwing out the story and everything else that was included into this anime. But if I had to give it a realistic score for Senran Kagura Shinobi Masters, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. 7 anime titties out of 10. Yeah, I'll give it that. 7 anime titties. It doesn't make sense when I say it like that, but... uh. Seven pair, pairs of anime titties. There we go. Now it makes sense, right? So, I gave it a seven, you know, like, I got where the story, I, I could understand at least what the story was telling because I was a fan, I am a fan of the franchise, but for newcomers, this is not the anime for you. You know, saying it at the end though, you know, this is not the anime for you. I'm not going to do a full review of the series either, like, this is going to be what's included right now. So, I gave it a 7 out of 10. It was good. It, a lot of it just felt like it was just thrown in there. It moved too fast. It didn't focus on a lot. And it just felt like a mashup of different events. And I got that because they were, they're really just trying to, like, please everyone with this one. So, they threw in a lot of stuff. Like, this Shinobi Master competition. It was, like, what, half of the series only? Like, till episode 7? 6? And then from there, we move on to the final battle between Fubuki. But they had a lot of moments where it was, like, setting up to that point and whatnot. And they focused on that, at least, you know, getting more character development between these girls. So if there's, if there's a reason why I did give it a higher score is because it was Fubuki's anime. We got her backstory. We got to learn more about her. We got to learn more about Senko and Gekko. What was your beef with the girls and whatnot? We got to learn about the Yoma and how they they have personalities. They feel love too. So my high score rating was really more focused on that. Everything else about this anime, you know, the animation had some poor points. Uh, the characters were all over the place. The story was all over the place. But at least it did start at one point and it ended at one point as well. It didn't just like go, you know, like that. It, it told a story from A to B. It didn't go A, D, G, and then B, you know? Like, that's too confusing. It did feel like that at times, but it was telling that story. It was telling it. You just had to pay attention, and I I was able to rewatch these episodes a second time each week, so I wouldn't get completely lost into what happened. But yeah, that's pretty much it. A 7 out of 10 for Shinobi Masters. It was good, and I loved Fubuki. I loved her backstory. I loved Rasetsu. Ah, uh, yes. Overall, it was not bad. As a Senran Kagura fan, they could have done better with this anime series, but they did a good job. If you understand where I'm coming from with that. Like, I... 
when it comes to giving constructive criticism, it's not the easiest thing for me to do because I don't. I either say something is good or it is bad. That's just how I am. I'm as simple as that. I can't say that, you know, it's like, oh, it was really good in this aspect, but where it really failed was this. It failed to deliver this message and whatnot. I can't do that. I can't do that. I, I really had to put some time and effort into doing stuff like that, but don't count on me for constructive criticism. I can tell you that this enemy was good, but it did have some bad points, you know, like that. I can give, that's the closest constructive criticism I can give you for this one. But yeah, 7 out of 10. I like the anime. It was good. But they could have done better. They could have done better with this. They could have done better with the pacing, talk about other things, and not just throw things all over the place. So that's where I'll leave you guys. Once again, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy this uh, episode reactions, first time ever on this channel, by the way, episode reactions to an anime, Samurai Kagura Shinobi Masters, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more in the future, if you would like to see me continue doing the episode reactions, uh, please do subscribe and look forward to that. And also look forward to my live streams. Very soon I'll do the, uh, or rather it's already happening or... I don't know. The Samurai Kagura Reflections conclusion with Riona. That's happening real soon, or it is already happening, or it has already happened. Uh, at this point, I can't really tell you a straight answer for that one. But yeah, I also hope you guys had a wonderful, happy New Year's, welcoming in the new year with a smile on your face or with positive energy. This year, it's going to be good. Like I said, I do have big plans for this year, and I hope you guys look forward to that as well. So yeah. It's Blackwing K, and I'm out of here with the official Ahegao hat. I am the lover of Echi. I am the Blackwing, and I'll catch you in the next video or live stream. Possibly a live stream. Most likely a live stream. All right? Bye now.